with hip pain or hip tightness, this is going to be a great video for you. My name is Gretchen McCarthy, founder of Balance to the Core, and today we are going to work the hips. So if you've experienced hip pain or hip tightness, it can be due to something else going on in the body, some sort of misalignment or overuse of muscles, but today we are going to work the movement of the hips. So we're going to make sure that we balance out the muscles, especially the muscles that are attached to the pelvis as well as to the femur, the thigh bone, because the thigh is attached to your pelvis by a ball and socket joint. So there's a lot of movement that can go on in there, which means there's a lot of stability we need to be able to do, and we need to be able to strengthen those little itty bitty muscles that are attached to your bones so that the movement that you do every day becomes more balanced. And what that's going to do is it's going to alleviate pain and it's going to prevent injury. And that's what we basically all want, right? So let's get started. Um, all you need is you and a mat. So let's get started lying down on our backs. I'm going to be talking about neutral spine, neutral pelvis, and some other positions. So if you're unsure what I'm talking about, I would suggest heading over to my beginner mat Pilates series where I explain all the principles of Pilates so that you'll know what I'm talking about. All right, so what I want you to do is just find your neutral pelvis, Get your feet lined up with your hip bones, get your shoulder blades down, get your chest open with your arms long down by your sides. You want your neck long and lengthened. All right, and I want you to just sort of transition yourself down into your mat, sort of put aside anything that was going on before, and take this time to really focus on you. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start with some breathing. You're gonna inhale in through the nose, and exhale out through the mouth. And as you breathe, you're sending your breath to the side parts of your ribs. And as you exhale, you're gonna to start to tighten up the abdominals and really draw them in tighter. Let's start to rock the pelvis back and forth with your breath. You inhale, roll it towards you. Exhale, roll it away from you. And gentle movement, you're not using your glutes, you're not using your feet. You're just using your abdominal muscles. Start to make the movement a little bit bigger. Start to sort of lift up the glutes, but you're not squeezing them. You're not pushing into the feet yet. You're using the low abdominals to create that movement. And what we're doing here is we're just trying to get into the lowest abdominal muscles, especially the pelvic floor, those low, low, low muscles attached to the bones, so that you can support your low back you can create more flexibility in your back. A lot of our hip issues are due to tightness in our back or weakness in the core muscles. So you wanna make sure we, you warm those up before you do this routine. Start to let it go a little bit higher. And this time you're gonna push into your feet a little bit. You're gonna engage the glutes a little bit, but not overly so. Again, roll, use your abdominals, really draw them in to start to lift up. That's where I really want the initiation and then when you roll it down, really try to get through each bone at, the time, at, the, at a different time so that you can create flexibility in the spine. And that's the goal of this warm-up exercise is just to get more flexibility into the back. Especially that low back, which gets a lot of tightness. And as you do this, you don't want the shoulders to shrug, no tension in that upper body, just moving the lower body. You can start to let it go up a little higher if you're not into your low back. So you can start to lift it up into a full bridge where you're on the shelf of your shoulders. You're squeezing that seat and you're really lengthening the thighs away from you. So now we're trying to create a little bit more length in the hip flexors. Stay right here for a second. Make sure your knees aren't going out to the sides, really keep them lined up. Now this length, this stretch in the hip flexors comes from the seat. The seat is creating the foundation for that stretch. So if you're just pushing up into the low back and you're not engaged at all, you're gonna create an overextension and you're not gonna have support where you're gonna create like really strain in your low back and a weakness in the hip flexors. So roll it down through the spine, bone by bone, using your abdominal muscles to create that. Send it back to neutral, so do that again. Roll it with the abs, push into the heels, feet flat and raise it up as you really feel yourself stretching from the seat and the abdominals. You have such support there. And then roll it down. 
And I want one more. Make sure those shoulders don't roll off the mat. Really keep everything super stabilized and engaged. Notice how your breath can help you. I want you to stay here for your breath. Take a nice deep inhale. Open the lungs. Open the ribs to the sides. Lengthen those thighs. Everything is working. And then exhale as you move it through the spine. And you can do that as many times as you want. Those are fabulous. All right, so now what I want you to do is take your legs up to tabletop. So really engage in your neutral spine. Don't let anything shift. Take one leg up to tabletop so the knee is above the hip. And without shifting the body, take the other leg to tabletop. We're going to tap one toe down and pull it back up. So now you're super engaged in those abdominal muscles. They're not moving. Your pelvis isn't moving. You're tapping away. So now we're separating the hip from the pelvis. So if your pelvis is moving with this movement, it means you're sort of making the muscles work almost together. And sometimes that's what creates um, low back pain. It can allow, maybe make your hip flexors work less efficiently. So what we want to do is we want to strengthen the hip flexors while really staying supported supported in the abdominal muscles, and that creates a healthy movement. So think about the thigh reaching away from you, the thigh coming back into you, the thigh pulling away from you, coming back in. So we're not just sort of tapping like this, because that's not going to do anything, right? We want to really create a healthy movement in that hip joint. Nice and parallel. One more each side. Inhale as you tap, exhale, pull in. And notice the work is really when you tap it down and up. Good. Stay at tabletop, but glue your thighs together. Feel them really connect with your muscles. Take your arms out to the sides with your palms down. And now keeping your thighs glued together, I just want you to rotate to one side. And your hips are going to go with you. Your knees stay glued shut. And then come back to center. Okay, now you're going to go over the other way. Thighs stay glued together. Your abdominals are pulling in opposition to support you. And come back. And it should feel really good. I like this one because we're working our oblique muscles. And this is like one of the exercises where your hips actually move while your body stays stable. So often we're trying to keep the hips stable while moving our limbs and body. This one's really nice to allow the hips to move. Helps with the low back, helps work the low back, helps stretch it. Keep your shoulders down. We'll just do one more. And then pull back with the abdominals. The abdominals pull back those hips. Good, and just hug it on in here. All right, so now what I want you to do is we're gonna to turn to our stomach just to kind of allow our hips to extend in support. So on your stomach, get your pelvis so it's down, flat on the mat, and I talk about that in my beginner series too, is how to get a neutral pelvis on your stomach. So from here, just take your arms down by your sides, or by your chest. Get your legs so they're sit bone distant. Pelvis neutral, draw your belly button up away from the mat, and pull your shoulders down. So now what I want you to do is I want you to start to lift your upper body up, initiating from the heart pushing through the chest, and then lower down. Inhale as you come up, push the chest or push the heart through the chest. And then I want you to just keep your pelvis sort of gently on the mat. And we're going to start to feel that extension in the hips. So we're allowing the thigh bone to rotate in extension. And start to come up a little bit higher if you're comfortable doing so. So sort of the higher you get up, the higher you're going to allow that femur to just rotate and open in the pelvis. Make sure you're not pushing into that low back. You really want to stay engaged in the belly to help support the back. The seat is engaged, but it's not super squeezing. You just want to keep it supported. So if I over squeeze the glutes, it sort of creates imbalance. One more time, pull the shoulders down, open the heart, pushing the heart through the ribs, feel that nice stretch, 
and lower down. So I wanted to create a nice stretch in the hip flexors with a support from the abdominals in the front of the body. Okay, now we're gonna make some movement happen in the hips, okay? We're gonna do some rotation. So get your knees so they're stacked upon each other, get your hips stacked upon each other, and your feet stay connected. And we're just gonna open the top leg by rotating it open and lower it down. So what you don't wanna do is rotate open so much where your hip pulls back, because that's what we do a lot, we overwork that way. We just wanna open up to where we keep our pelvis neutral where your hips stay stacked on each other. You wanna keep your spine long and your feet connected. So those rotator mu muscles are working, the ones that rotate the hip open. And really sort of feel it, feel how that, that joint rotates. Feel how the bone just sort of slides around there and you're keeping the pelvis stable. So those ab muscles have to work, that stability has to work. Let's do a couple more here. Work with your breath. And now I wanna do the same motion, but I want you to pick up your feet. And this is gonna allow a little bit more rotation to happen. A little bit deeper into the muscle. Shoulders stay relaxed, belly stays long. So you don't want to collapse into this. You want to keep a nice long waistline, almost like there's a little mouse hole underneath your waist. For four, feel that gentle squeeze. You never want to squeeze too much. You don't want to overdo it. You'll feel it. Let's do two more. And then I want you to hold it open on that last one, hold it, and then just stretch from there, bring it back in and lower it down. Open, stretch, and down. Three more times, three, and two. One more, hold it there, and then just little itty bitty lifts up, staying exactly where you are for five, four, three, two, one. Bend it in, lower it down, lower the feet down. Good, let's go to the other side. Balance yourself out on your sides. So line yourself up with your mat, the back of your mat, bend your knees, knees stacked, hips stacked, feet stacked, and then just open and close that top leg. And you're gonna feel sort of where you need to shift your legs to create that. But it's basically like a 90 degree angle at the knee. Your head is just supported by your arm. You can reach your arm long here too if that's more comfortable. I should have said that on the other side. But you want to really keep your upper body stable and long. So you want to gaze to stay forward. I do have a tendency to look down at what I'm doing, but that causes too much neck flexion. So just stay nice and long. Feet stay together. Hips stay stacked. Belly in with that little mouse hole underneath you. So much. And make sure this top shoulder doesn't start rolling forward, really keep it engaged. So what you're doing is you're lying on your side. So you've sort of made this like mind shift. You have to now think about your body on the side staying stable while the hip rotates. Because we just want to make sure we work all planes. And now do the same thing with your feet up, staying together, but it just allows a little bit more rotation to happen. Start paying attention to what the different sides feel like. So this side feels totally different right now for me because I have some sciatica going on in it, but it's interesting just to feel that. And you're always working towards balancing your body. Two more. Now I want you to keep this leg open and then you're gonna stretch it long. You're gonna bend it back in and lower it down. And just pay attention to sort of the movement happening in the hip. You never wanna grip anything. And I want you to try to feel your abdominals in everything that you do. Notice how they support you in everything.
your pelvis is just super still. Now I want you to hold it out there and then just give me little beats up and everything just stays where it is, just super still. See how more perfect you can make your posture. Breathe and then just lower it on down. Good. All right, so the next part of the series, we're gonna do standing up. So now I want you standing up and we wanna stand up with a neutral pelvis. So weight is equal on both legs. Roll the shoulders back and down, pull the belly in. And I just want you to bend your front leg. Keep equal weight still on both feet, but you're on the ball of the foot. So you're on the whole ball of the foot. You're not sickling outward or inward. Really try to stay on the whole foot from the big toe to the little toe. And all I want you to do is you're going to turn inward, turn outward. And you're not overly doing it. You're not sitting into your hip, staying really upright. Just turn in, turn out. And you're gonna, you're just giving little lifts in between. Feeling the rotation inward and then outward. And you're gonna notice for, yeah, for most people, the inward is a little bit weaker. So we wanna balance that out. And then when you start to sort of have that inward and outward, we're gonna start to add a little bit movement with it. You're gonna turn inward, you're gonna drag your foot and you're gonna make little eights with your foot. So your toe, your big toe especially, is gonna drag on the floor as you turn in and then you turn out, turn in, turn out. Good. So you're just allowing it to do the inward and outward in a little bit of a movement. And it's crossing the, over the body, it's going out of the body, inward, outward. And then we're gonna make the range of motion a little bit bigger. So you're gonna go in and lift, cross. So now it's not dragging on the floor. You're allowing the leg to stay lifted off the floor so your bottom leg is balancing you and you're just turning the leg in, turning the leg out. You're still making the number eight. Your abs are tight, your shoulders are down, you're not wobbling. And just go four, and three, two, and one, and come to center, okay? So now the other way, in, out. You're staying on the ball of the foot, your supported leg has a little give to it. You never want to lock the knee out. You want to stay balanced and tall. You're working the inward muscle, the outward. Medial rotation, external rotation. So notice how you can really just feel the motion in that hip socket while the pelvis stays still. Now we're gonna add some drag so the feet, toes stay down and you're just gonna make little figure eights. Your toe just kind of drags along the floor as you go in towards the body and out. Make sure you're not sitting into the hip that's standing. Really wanna stay balanced and supported. Good. And then you can add a little lift of the leg. So now you do the figure eights without the toe dragging and your supporting leg is gonna get a lot of work as well. So you're working the stabilized muscles on the supported side. You're working the rotation on that side that's moving. Stay tall, don't lose your alignment. Shoulders down, belly in, ribs in. Four, three, two, and one. Good and release it down. Good, just give me a roll down all the way down to your toes and roll it up. Good, so I hope this helped you a little bit. We just sort of worked all angles of the hip joint. We also worked it in all different positions, lying down on your side, on the front and standing. So we tried to get, I tried to get all those angles. So hopefully this helped you. Um, if you liked these workouts and you wanna use them more in a workout sort of way, you can join my 21 Days of Pilates, which I have included the link to from here. So thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like. If you want to share it with somebody, that's awesome. And subscribe so that you never miss a workout. I'm here every week. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Take care.